will be moderating this session. Um, we ask that you submit your questions for Q&A in the Q&A section at the bottom. The uh, questions will be queued in the order received. So I'd um, like to welcome uh, Kevin Maynell. He works at the Internet Society um, as the manager of technical and operational engagement supporting the deployment of key internet technologies, including routing security. He previously worked for Janet, um, which is the UK NREN, and Giant, and uh, much was known from there. Um, so the talk, Observing Your Manners, um, it's about uh, BGP, which is, uh, or controlling BGP, which is uh, entirely based on trust with no built-in validation of the legitimacy of routing updates. It causes a lot of problems, and there's been a growing number of major incidents the last Three years. So manners, the mutually assured norms for routing security, tries to address these problems and we're excited to hear about it. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay, thank you, Margaret. Um, so yeah, as, as mentioned, this is about uh, the manners initiative, uh, but also um, talking about a, a tool that we have for uh, measuring and monitoring um, the state of routing security on the internet. So um, I'm not going to go into too much technical detail about how the global routing system works. Um, I think most people here are technical, uh, but just a very brief background. Um, so there are around 70,000 um, networks that are connected to the internet, um, which are identified using um, uh, an autonomous system number or AS number. Um, and of these 70,000, um, around 10,000 of these are what you'd call multi-home. So they have at least two other connections to other networks on the internet. Um, and that's primarily what we're interested in rather than the uh, 60,000 stub or so stub networks. Um, so routers use BGP to exchange reachability information. Um, in other words, uh, the networks that they know how to reach. Uh, and then these routers build a routing table, which they use to pick the best route and sending a packet um, based on different metrics, but typically based on the shortest path. Now, the problem with BGP is that um, it's really entirely based on verified trust between networks. Um, there isn't inherently any built-in validation that BGP updates are legitimate. Um, and really anybody that's on the internet or running a network on that's connected to the internet can announce that they're anything. Um, they can announce IP prefixes that they, they don't, they're not authorized to originate. They can announce AS numbers that don't belong to them. Um, and this is not helped by really a lack of uh, reliable resource data. So how do we actually go and check this information? Um, this is hampered a bit because even with the WHOIS databases and the IRRs, it, anybody can really put information in there. And the upshot is that the routing system is under attack uh, and it's under attack every day. Now there are three main incidents that cause the problems. Um, one is a route uh, hijack. So this is where a network operator or an attacker is impersonating another network operator. Um, and this can cause packets to be forwarded to the wrong place. Uh, it can cause denial of service attacks. It can be used for traffic interception. Um, there's been a number of well-publicized cases around this. Um, uh, for example, uh, Going back to 2008, um, one of the big publicized events with uh, Pakistan Telecom, uh, but there's been a number of incidents over the years since then. Uh, so you have route leaks as well. Um, so this is very similar to a route hijack. So this is where a network, network operator um, announces to one of its upstream providers that it has a route to a destination through another provider. Um, so this could be used this causes traffic to be diverted to the wrong place. Um, often it will reach the eventual destination, but um, as well as being inconvenient and sometimes causing um, um, outages and delays in traffic, um, it can be used for traffic inspection and reconnaissance um, as well. Uh, there's been a number of route leaks, actually big route leaks this year, uh, one, two or three months ago, um, and I think one earlier in the year. Um, so this is something that, that is happening quite regularly. And then you have IP address spoofing, which is probably familiar to maybe most people in the CERT community. Uh, this is where someone creates an IP packet with a false source IP address to hide their identity or to impersonate another computing system. 
uh, and this is the root cause of the reflection DDoS attacks. Um, so again, these are probably quite familiar to, to um, the CSERT community. Now you might hear about the well publicized events. Um, there was one in Brazil, as I say, two months ago, just two months ago. Uh, but just uh, an example from this year, um, six months earlier this year, uh, this shows you the, the, the attacks uh, that are happening. But well, not attacks, some of these are, uh, um, actually these are attacks, actually this graph. So these are the incidents that are happening, um, um, that have happened every day uh, in the first six months of 2020. Okay, so that brings us to manners. Um, so what is manners? Well, this is really trying to bring together all of the well-established industry practices um, that help address or improve routing security. So a lot of you know, the, the issues with the global routing system have been acknowledged and identified for many, many years. Um, and a number of solutions have been proposed and in some cases implemented. Uh, but these are really very piecemeal. Um, they're not always fully implemented. Uh, not all the network operators are doing this. Um, so what we try to do is bring together the, all of the best practices um, and sort of package this up and say, okay, if you we produce these actions, so in, in case of network operators, there's four actions. If you implement these actions, this should really um, help eliminate most of the common threats in, in the global routing system. Um, but it's also a statement that, you know, if you're participating in this scheme, then you're sharing responsibility for the internet infrastructure. So it's responsible operators saying, you know, we need we acknowledge there's a problem with the routing system, we need to improve that, and we're committed to cleaning that up. So we have uh, three programs. Um, I'm not going to go into all of them in depth, but I'm going to just focus on the network operators program, which is the one that we have the most participants in. So there's four actions for this. Um, for example, there's action one, that's filtering. So this is about uh, preventing propagation of incorrect routing incident, uh, about in propagation of incorrect routing information. Um, so we that, that's a mandatory action that if you're participating in the scheme, then um, yeah, you should be implementing this, making sure that you only announce what you're authorized to announce. Uh, we have a, a, an optional action, which is anti-spoofing. So this is really ensuring that uh, your own only traffic coming out of your network well has the correct uh, IP addresses. Um, there's no spoofed IP addresses. Um, action three is um, coordination. So this is really making sure that you have um, uh, an up-to-date um, and responsive contact in one of the RAR databases, or you can also put it into peering DB as well. So if there is a problem, people know that they can contact you and you will respond um, to whatever incident is observed. And then finally, we have global validation. So this is one of two things. Um, one is publishing your routing data in a internet routing registry. So this would be AS numbers, IP prefixes. So this publishes that you're authorized to originate this, these number of resources. Um, but preferably we would like you to create um, rowers for this. So use RPKI, cryptograph cryptographically attest that um, um, you're authorized to originate um, these number of resources. There are two other programs, um, one for IXPs. They don't tend to uh, appear on the global in, in, in BGP tables. So, uh, but IXPs play an important role in um, um, uh, you know, encouraging their members to sign up to Manners. So we have a separate set of actions for them. Uh, and we also have a, a, a relatively new program for CDN and cloud providers, which have very similar actions to the network operators. Um, but I'm not going to go into too much detail here because this is really about um, the, the tool that we're using to, to support this. Okay, so routing security and CSERTs. Okay, why, why are we interested in talking to you? Um, well, I think it's no surprise that CSERTs are monitoring and responding to network security incidents. Um, and you're also involved in developing security awareness and mitigation measures. Um, now, um, the global routing system is a very key element of critical infrastructure. Um, it's actually as important as anything else, if not more important. Um, but I think in general, CSETs do not, don't include routing security within their service portfolios. Um, so this is really where we're coming, coming from, that we feel that this should be something that CSET should be um, considering. 
So yeah, we really see the CETA community as being critical to the success um, of the Manners Initiative. Okay, so what, what can you do? Um, okay, firstly, you can really raise awareness of um, these routing security issues within your constituencies. Um, but you can also raise awareness in the national critical infrastructure activities as well. Um, we are talking to some governments and um, national certs, but um, I think you know this is a, a both a push and a pull um, activity, and uh, this is something that everybody needs to be aware of, at least involved in running the internet. Um, you can also add routing security incident monitoring and handling to the service portfolio. Um, so this becomes part of your normal range of activities. And also help organize routing security workshops um, or routing security curriculums. So you can train people to look at this and to analyze this or to be aware of um, that this is also an area of network security that should be considered. And then, of course, uh, looking at the network forensic side as well, you know, who is originating these incidents, where are they coming from, who are the culprits, uh, that can also be part of this as well. Um, we don't do too much of that, the forensic side. I mean, it's a little bit of a side subject for us. We're more interested in actually preventing the problem rather than trying to investigate and cure the problem. Um, but we can definitely see that, you know, if we can identify some of the worst offenders, then that might also be uh, useful. And also you can add routing security to auditing, network security auditing programs as well. You know, this should be part of a whole holistic look at, you know, is a network, uh, your network secure. So we have this tool, we developed this tool, uh, which will help with the monitoring, um, see so it's like tools. Uh, and this is another tool you can add uh, to the armory. So the Manners Observatory, this is uh, a web-based system. It draws on um, a number of different data sources. So these are all publicly available data sources, uh, which you can all go to, you can go and look at individually. Um, they all have their own websites. Uh, you can go and look at that information, but it's very hard to pull that together into a, into a general overview. You know, you have to go to multiple sites. Um, some of the information is quite hard to, to visualize or, or to um, make sense of. Um, so what we really needed was a dashboard type arrangement where you could just take a look and say, across the board, this network is doing the right thing or is not doing the right thing or has problems or doesn't have problems. Um, and then if we also wanted to look at, well, what is, is the state of routing security getting better or worse over time? You know, is the manners initiative, are the routing security measures having an impact? Uh, so we can look back now over about two years of data and say, okay, there isn't worse or better. Um, and it's actually more useful even for the individual networks so you can actually see whether they've improved and they can see where their problems are. Um, so that's really what we're, we're, um, we have this for. So some of the publicly available data sources, it's BGP Stream. Uh, we you pull on the CIDA report that's produced by APNIC Labs. The CADA Spoofer database, um, you can run anti-spoofer software um, and that will check whether spoof packets will emanate from your network. Um, so we pull on that. And then there's also the, the RAR databases, um, the internet routing registries, and we have been using our PKO validator, although that's going to be going away in a year or so, so we'll need to replace that. Okay, so I'm going to give a demo of the, um, of, of the actual observatory itself, um, if I can find the, um, if I can actually find the uh, screen. And uh, so, yeah, this is the, um, um, if you come to this, um, uh, to the URL, so it's observatory.manus.org, um, you, you get a sort of dashboard view. Um, initially, this will uh, show you the whole world. So this is statistics for the whole, uh, for the whole of the internet. Um, and this is for November. So you can actually go back and look month by month in the past. Um, and this will be up to date as of yesterday. So we, it's a day behind, but it rolls over every day. This information, all this information is updated every day. So looking at- look, are, 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 Is there supposed to be a map here? Uh, can you see the screen? Uh, we can see the top part of the uh, browser. Okay. Can you see the- uh, the, the map, you can't see the map. No. Okay. 
uh, that's all good. Let me just stop the share and okay, that worked of course earlier and now it doesn't work in, in the tradition of all live demos. Can you see that? Yes. Great, brilliant. Okay, I don't know what went wrong there. Okay, so um, you see the dashboard. So you can see the map, the global map. This is the information for the whole, um, uh, the whole of the internet. So you can see action by action, um, the, the, how the network, the whole of the internet conforms with each of the four actions. So you have filtering, anti-spoofing, coordination, and then action four, which is global validation, and um, IRR and global validation, RPKI. So that fourth action is split into two aspects. So you can see, you know, generally uh, there's not too many route incidents in the scale of the internet, but of course 1% still means a lot of incidents. Um, for anti-spoofing, that's the one thing we can't check passively. We have to, the networks actually have to run the spoofer software. So for most networks, we don't have any information there, but for the ones we do, we, we can provide that information. Uh, it looks like for coordination, 90% of the networks have an active contact uh, in, the, in one of the RAR databases. Um, generally, networks are doing pretty well with putting their, their, their information into, um, um, into an IRR, their number of resources. Um, they're still 13% are not doing that. And then with RPKI, only 20% of the networks are actually have, uh, sign, have, are signing their, their routes. So that's something to work on there. So we can actually look at this by uh, region, um, different region. We can look by aggregate by UN region, by sub region, by RAR region. Uh, so we could look for ARIN, for example, and get an update on the, um, the statistics there. It's pretty much the same for ARIN as for the world, although slightly worse on, on IRR and definitely worse on RPKI for some reason. So something for the North American market to work on. Um, but we can also do this by country. And as, as we're, virtually, we're virtually in Canada this time, we should have been in Canada, I should pick on Canada. Uh, and we can get similar statistics for Canada um, as well. Now, this is not very exciting so far, it's just academic interest. So what we really need to know is, you know, what's the information for individual networks? So um, we can actually get a list of all the networks in Canada um, that you can see, and you can see the state of their routing conformance uh, for each of these networks. Um, these are actually sorted by AS number at the moment. And I'm just gonna pick on one, and I'm sorry if they have one of their representatives uh, in the audience. Um, I'm just picking on you because it's a big, well-known network in Canada. Um, this is not about embarrassing, aiming to embarrass anybody, but it's a good example. So I'm going to pick on AS8812, and I can break this down uh, by individual, uh, individual incidents. So I can see that they, in, in November, they had route leaks. They had a route leak, um, it looks like 83, 135, 1680. Um, and you can actually identify the path where this is coming from as well. Um, there is a reference to the BGP stream, which flagged this incident. Um, it's fair to say sometimes you get false positives, but at least that helps identify where the problems may be coming from. Um, they also had some bogons. So a bogon is you know, a, a, an IP number resource that shouldn't be routed on the internet. So it can be a private AS, it can be a reserved AS or a reserved uh, range of IP prefixes. Um, so these are not so bad as route incidents, but they shouldn't really be seen on the internet. Um, but we flagged these as well. Quite often you'll see private AS numbers or private ranges of IP numbers will appear. Um, this one doesn't appear to be that. Uh, but again, you can see when this occurred and what the paths were uh, uh, through the internet. So this helps you identify the problems. And it's fair to say, you know, a lot of networks aren't aware they have these problems. Um, they just don't know that they have these route incidents happening. Um, they may have some filter, there's something wrong with the filters or there isn't a filter um, uh, and they're just simply not aware this is happening. Um, so be a Bogon AS as we can look at as well. Um, again, um, 27470, I'm not sure what that one is, but uh, some of these are administrative Bogons as well. They're, they're not, they are assigned, but they've been flagged as Bogons for some um, administrative reason. 
we can actually look by um, um, if there's been spoof packets observed from the network. Um, we can actually look at where they're coming from. Um, this network doesn't, ha we haven't seen any spoof packets. Probably they haven't run the spoof software. Um, but then we can look at the, the unregistered routes. Um, so the routes that haven't been put into an IRR. Um, and you can get a complete list of those. Uh, what you're, so you'll see a lot of IPv6 addresses here, and that's often what you find that they, networks may register their IPv4 addresses and forget about their IPv6 addresses. So there's really a lot of IPv6 here, uh, but it does help identify what needs to be done. Um, but ultimately, uh, you know, we, 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 we're looking towards moving towards RPKI. Um, this network has, has rowers, created rowers for just under half of their prefixes. Uh, but if you want to know which prefixes haven't been, um, um, don't have rowers, signed rowers, uh, you can actually go to, um, we have a link to the um, ripe stat um, for this uh, AS. Um, we're not recreating the wheel here. There's a perfectly good system already. So this will show which prefixes have um, RPKI and actually IRR uh, resources um, signed. Okay, so that's a very brief update. Um, you can actually go and look at the history as well for a network. Um, so this is the history uh, for this 812 network. You can see they've got a little bit of a history of route incidents. Um, looking at uh, some other things, looks like they're probably doing anti-spoofing measures in sometimes. Um, and with respect to um, the IRR and RPKI, it gives you a state of, uh, an idea of the state of how well they're doing there. So you can go back and look month by month and actually look at the history as well. So that's really a very, very brief um, uh, demonstration. I'm just gonna go back to the um, presentation now. Uh, hopefully you can see this. Um, so I did have some reserve slides just in case the demo failed, which, uh, you know, that's a precaution. Um, but so basically at the moment, if the public, the public can go and view the overall regional and economy aggregated data, um, at the moment, only Manus participants have access to the detailed data. Um, and that's really because there's some false positives. Sometimes there's reasons for non-performancy. Um, and there's all other reasons that we, we're really trying to persuade networks rather than punish networks or to expose networks. So that's why at the moment, there's only the detailed information is available to actual Manus participants. But we can create accounts for aspirants, people that want to sign up to manners and need to work through problems. Uh, and we've also been creating accounts for certs as well. So we can create an account for your whole constituency and you can look at all of the networks that, uh, that, that uh, are, are part of your constituency. So you can look at, um, we, we did this for cert NZ, for example. Um, and they can take a look at all the networks in there in, in New Zealand and see, check them out for uh, routing security issues. Uh, but this is all public data anyway. You could actually find this out, even if you don't go to the observatory, it's just slightly more inaccessible. Um, but in time, we will probably move this to being public data. Um, it's just not at the moment. Okay, in terms of participation, we've been growing a lot. Um, uh, this is, we're up to nearly 500 ISPs are now participating in this program. Uh, I think we're representing something like 600 or 650 or 700 AS numbers. Um, so it's been really this year has been, lockdown has been good because people have been fixing their routing problems on the networks. Um, the, the, the IXPs have been signing up. We've had a lot of signups on IXP side. Um, and then on the cloud side, this is relatively, well, it's quite a new program. So uh, we have 14 um, participants so far, but that, that's been growing as well. Um, just in terms of the certs, though, we don't have a lot of cert participation, to be fair, and that's what we'd like to see differently, uh, we'd like to encourage. Um, so Tim Cymru, they are members, um, and TW Cert are members, uh, although we do have quite a few participants that operate certs as well, so even if the cert isn't a directly a member, um, they, they're probably the cert of a, a, a Manus participant, so the, the, the participation rate is higher than it, it would immediately appear. Um, and then CERT NZ, we've been talking to, um, again, because yeah, it, it's a good, we, we've been testing our 
ability to create um, sort of constituency groups as well. So that was quite a useful uh, interaction. Okay, and so that should be um, just about it. Um, if you're interested in joining Manners, um, please have a look at our website or drop me an email. I will say that you know certs are not necessarily operating their own networks or may not even have an AS number, so it may not be completely appropriate to join the network operators program, for example. But again, we can provide accounts for your constituencies, which may be useful in helping um, diagnose routing problems. So yeah, we'd encourage encourage everyone to get involved and you know, help improve the, the security of the router security on the internet. And that's um, that's it from me. Yes, thank you. Uh, we have a question. So um, it's about the uh, the experience of handling uh, BGP poisoning. Um, for an AS to filter poisoned uh, advertisements, it can be difficult to fully understand what is driving the behavior without having insider information from the ISP's uh, policies. So is Manners uh, experiencing the same obstacles in gaining, uh, getting the policy from the ISPs? And how is the best way to deal with that? Um, yes, we are. We have this problem. Um, and no, we don't have an answer yet. Uh, so uh, this is something that we, we actually having doing some research on at the moment because we do have this problem. Um, so it is very hard sometimes to attribute um, to attribute where these issues are coming from. Um, all we can do is observe the problem. Um, so probably looking at different data points, uh, we think may be the way forward. Um, and we, so the, 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 for example, BGP Stream, although I think the commercial version does look at multiple data points, um, the version we're using, the non-paid version and the public version um, doesn't do that. So this is a bit of an issue in diagnosing problems. So at the moment, we can only identify the problems. Um, we can't necessarily attribute the problem, but that is something we're aware of and, and working on. Um, and I don't think I have the answer yet. Um, we have uh, another question. Are there any uh, possible issues if manners policies could be actually considered to be enforced by the regulatory authorities? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, okay, this is this is a question that comes up. Um, so we're not wanting to make this, you know, a regulatory thing. Uh, this is really about trying to get operators to do the right thing, to see they have issues, and it's in their best interest to implement good routing practice. And actually, I think we've been very successful at that. So even some of the worst, what you consider the worst offenders on the net, on the internet, who are well publicized and well known, we've actually been talking to them and they've been using this tool to work through their problems. And they said, look, we know we've got problems. Um, we know we're causing problems. We just don't know where the problems are. And they've actually been actively using this tool and working through the problems. And uh, actually yesterday we had a talk, we, we discussed it with a very big uh, network, which is one of the well-known offenders and they've incidents have dropped from a large amount to almost nothing in the space of three months. So that's where we want to get to. We want to do encouragement. Um, so stick, uh, sorry, carrot rather than stick, uh, rather than say, okay, this becomes a regulatory thing. Um, now that's not to say that governments may not pick up on this or somebody may not pick up on this, but that's not what Manus is about. This is a you know, community industry led um, initiative to improve the state of routing security. And that's absolutely where we want to come from. So one final question, a really short, do you plan to provide an API? So there is an API. Um, it's very limited at the moment, but yes, um, there is, uh, it's not widely used, but we do have that opportunity, oh, that, that uh, we can offer that. So I think we have to uh, quit here, but um, thank you so much, uh, Kevin. It was very interesting. And I hope to see you soon <laughs> in person. Indeed. Thank you.